Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. I slept in again. It was wonderful. Let's start with a prayer. <sighs> my dear Heavenly Father, I am so very thankful for the opportunity to sleep in and for the rest that I received. Please bless us as we read thy scriptures and study thy words that we can have a soft heart and become teachable that we can learn the things that thou would have us learn we ask you to please watch over and bless our loved ones as they go about their day please be with hannah and all the other missionaries bless them strengthen them and help those who are especially struggling we love thee father so very much and say these things in the name of jesus christ amen okay Sorry. What's today? The 12th? Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, remember my son and learn wisdom in thy youth. Yea, learn in thy youth to keep the commandments of God. Alma chapter 37, verse 35. Alma knew firsthand the anguish of soul that comes to those who choose wickedness, who reject the righteous counsel of prophets and parents. For three days he had been racked with the pains of a damned soul, experiencing inexpressible horror at the thought of meeting his maker. Feeling encircled about with the everlasting chains of death, Jesus rescued him from the gall of bitterness and set him on the path of mighty change. Alma earnestly counseled his son to learn from the mistakes of his own early life, turn to Christ, and his atonement now hate sin and iniquity be meek and lowly in heart do good works the wisest course to follow especially when followed from one's youth is to keep the commandments of god and experience true joy and happiness hmm. that's a good one i like that one okay today is Helaman chapter 14, verses 1 through 15. And this is Samuel predicts, or he, he gives a sign, sorry, he gives a sign of the Savior's birth, and then he gets into starting to give a sign for his death. And that's within these first 15 verses. I didn't find a teachable verse. Um, there is, and if you believe on his name and will repent all your sin, of all your sins, that thereby you may have a remission of them through his merits, but I didn't really think that was, that didn't speak teachable to me. So that's really what happens in these first 15 verses. Let's get into our commentary. Okay. Oh, regarding verses 1 and 2. <sighs> Five years more then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. Salvation cometh. That is the message of the prophets of God. From the beginning of time, this message has centered on Christ and his redeeming mission. Isaiah proclaimed before Israel, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. King Benjamin confirmed, There is no other name given whereby salvation cometh. Therefore, I would that ye should take upon you the name of Christ. All you, though, all you that have entered into the covenant with God, that ye should be obedient unto the end of your life. Excuse me. Um, this is... Sorry, my eyes are watering. Okay, this is a, not an interesting point, but this is, um, this is, what am I trying to say? I don't know. I'm not finding the right words, but what, I'm trying to express it. When he says salvation cometh, and then he, like, do you believe in Christ? Yes. Do you have faith in Christ? Yes. 
if you truly believe that he's coming again, if you believe in the second coming, if you believe in the if you believe in judgment day, if you believe in the three degrees of glory, if you believe that, then why aren't you living as though salvation is coming? You're we've talked about putting off the day of your repentance, but salvation is coming. The savior is coming. That's not a that's not a a maybe. That's not a maybe. That's not a if. It's a when. The only question is when. It's going to happen. And are you living as such? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Are you procrastinating the day of your repentance? Possibly. Okay. Uh, that was all. It skips right to verse 29 after that. Let's get into our commentary. Nope, nope. Daily reading on prayer. This is what happens when I sleep in. Okay. Where are we at? Today's Thursday. It's only Thursday. 256 Von J. Featherstone. Praying when faced with obstacles. In our lives, each of us must face a mountain to climb. It may be a financial crisis, a great soul-shaking illness of a loved one, or some other great test. During those trying times, a prayer might be worded like this. Heavenly Father, I have come to a mountain I can't climb. I have thought about it. I have studied it. I have read the scriptures. I have counseled with many about it, and I simply cannot solve this problem. The mountain is too big, and I can't get over it. I can't climb this one. Please, I am asking for help. No, I am not asking. I am pleading. I'm begging. Please, please, dear God, help me. In that moment, I promise you that it would be as though he would say, Take my hand in yours. I will walk with you all the way. I am not going to take away the problem because I want you to grow. Trust in me and I will take you down streets you would have thought imposs impossible. And I will cause you to speak beautifully eloquent words of truth. You will serve in places you never would have supposed. I will walk with you all the way to the mountain's top. I will never forsake you. Have faith and trust. When those times of soul-shaking experience come, each of us can turn to deep, meaningful, sincere prayer. I testify that the great being we affectionately call our Father in heaven that being who is supreme in all power is the supreme and all powerful almighty God, the great Elohim, will with love and tenderness and absolute compassion give us answer to our prayers. Thank you, Von J. Featherstone. That was good. Sending that one to Hannah. I've decided that every day I'm going to send her a an email from my Come Follow Me study. Something spiritual, and that's all I talk about. And, you know, how proud I am of her. I want her to feel like she's got this. She can do this. I know it's hard, but I know she can do it. Okay. It is the 12th. Let's end it with a read it, do it. Helaman chapter 14, verses 14 through 31. They highlight verse 31. If you do good, you will have good restored unto you. If you do evil, then you will have evil restored unto you. You can do good. That's a good one. Okay. That was Helaman chapter 14, verses 1 through 15. And tomorrow we finish out the chapter with verses 16 through 31. Tomorrow is Friday, even though I just said it's Thursday. I was a little bit sad about it because it is, it's Thursday. I wish it was Friday. Actually, I wish it was Saturday morning. So, um, work is exhausting. Not that it's been busy, but we're training two people and they have job coaches. And so I'm training four people and it's like... It's just exhausting. It's, it's exhausting. I don't know how it is, but it just, 
mentally and emotionally. It is draining me so much. And that's why I've been sleeping in these past two days and not going for my walks because I just, I can't, I just, I sit on the couch before I have to go to work and literally I'm like, I need a miracle to get me up and get me going. I need a miracle. Okay. Let's end it with prayer. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time we have to pause before we start our busy day. Please bless us with the strength that we need to get through and for the motivation and for the positive things that we need to seek the joy in the day. Please bless my YouTube friends with whatever they're needing at this time. And please help us to have a teachable heart. We love thee, Father, so very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's becoming easier to pray. It's, a, it, it's feeling more natural. I like it. All right. That prayer was mainly for me. <laughs> All right. I need it, though. I need every ounce of his help. Okay. Enough of my rambling. I love you all. Have a great day. Tomorrow's Friday. Bye.